we are back and we are working on my Mercedes 220e. This channel is sponsored by Shipley, which is a fantastic service that I personally use to save money moving cars around the country. I think there is just one more thing that we can try to get this car just running, just so I can take it around the block a few times. And I'm only trying this because so many people have commented on my videos now saying that this is the issue. And that is replacing the crank position sensor. Here is my current working theory. This is just something that I've pieced together from, you know, doing a load of research, learning how cars work and you guys helping me out in the comments. So I think the problem is occurring when the car switches from open loop to closed loop. Now, open loop is kind of like a state that your that your your car is in, your engine is in. When you first start it up, until it comes up to temperature, it's kind of just looking at a couple of variables. I think maybe in this case, the throttle position, it might be looking at the camshaft sensor, uh, maybe, might be looking at the airflow, and it basically just runs a kind of default set of parameters through the ECU just to keep the engine firing. And then what happens is it gets the temperature from the coolant temperature sensor, which is actually saw me place in the last video and then once it's up temperature it switches into closed loop and then what happens there is that it then starts using all of the sensors on the engine to you know there's one big feedback loop to to tell it exactly what's going on and then to be able to adjust all different parameters really closely and so what's happening is when it goes into closed loop it's then looking at data from the crankshaft position sensor which it wasn't doing when it wasn't before it was up to temperature and then the crankshaft position sensor is broken and so when the ECU switches over and it looks for that data from the CPS and it's not there it shuts the engine off that's my current work in theory now the wiring harness on this car still 100% needs to be replaced and I'm still absolutely going to do it but I just want to try this one last thing because if it is just this sensor and you know I can I can jam it around town for a day or two then I'm going to be absolutely over the moon and it would be great as well just for you guys to see that as it's you know all of you guys actually telling me what's wrong with this and so many people have said it that I kind of want to want to make sure that you know I've hit I've hit all the options so what I have actually managed to do is I have sourced a, uh, a genuine Mercedes Bosch uh, crank position sensor these are surprisingly difficult to get a hold of but the main problem i have now is i'm not actually a hundred percent sure where this sensor goes i think i mean just using an educated guess it's gonna have to be well <laughs> right down near the crankshaft i think i think 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 i can actually see it right down there kind of on top of the bell housing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and jam my hand down there and i can see it right now and it already looks like the wrong sensor oh, damn it no way that does not look like that sensor does it is that the crank position sensor though that's the that's the problem we need all all of the extensions every last one of them in you go Now here's the thing as well, this is the crank position sensor. It's just gonna leave me with more questions because this crank position sensor was supposed to have been replaced by a garage not long before I bought this car. So we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Yes, okay. Oh, go on, just slide on out. It was never gonna just slide on out, was it? Okay, so this here is the crankshaft position sensor I've just pulled off the car. There's a sensor that uh, happens to be covered in what looks like rust. That's the part that actually goes into the into the uh, the bell housing. So the this uh, sensor is just also has its own kind of integrated cable, and then that plugs in just to there. And I suppose that goes into I must just go into the ECU. This is the crankshaft position sensor I was told actually fitted this car. Now, I'm not gonna blame the people that sold this to me because really I should have come in here first and checked and got this part number. Um, so although I was told that would fit, 
I have to take responsibility really at the end of the day for that. I now need to try and find one of these. This is a genuine Mercedes item. And so it does look like it's been on there for quite a while because of all of the all of the markings on it. It looks quite old, to be honest. And so instantly I'm questioning whether the garage that said they replaced this actually did replace this because I know that garage has put a lot of non-Mercedes parts on this car and this still has the Mercedes badge on it. I don't know if you can see, so I'm questioning it. So I've just been looking around online and you can get these, but they all seem to come from Germany and it looks like they're gonna take about 17 years to actually arrive. I, I am wondering, you know, if you can actually just buy this from Mercedes. It might be worth a shot. Hi mate, um, I, I've got a part number, if that helps you out more then. <laughs> it's uh, 002, it's for a, nine, yeah, for a 1993 um, E-Cars. No, I didn't think you would. <laughs> 198 pounds okay okay cool um can i call you back and let you know is that all right <laughs> oh, cheers bye <laughs> how much <laughs> what did he say 193 quid It's not actually even hot, it's, it's only, it's minus one degrees out here. It's that price that's making me sweat. Wow, 100 and, yeah, I think uh, I might have to go for one of the in Germany options because they're 21 quid. I know it's gonna arrive sometime before the next total solar eclipse, but it's not 190 whatever pounds. Hello. So it's, well, I think just over a week, a week later now, that's how long it took for my new crankshaft position sensor to arrive from Germany, but arrive it has. So what I'm gonna do right now is just quickly fit this. And then what I'm gonna need to do is kind of actually put everything back together again, because this is all, this is all loose. The coils are out and then we'll see whether or not this crankshaft position sensor is what has been causing all of my grief. Okay, so everything is now buttoned back down again as best I could. Now there is a chance that actually uh, cylinders one and four, uh, I've connected these in the wrong way because I thought I took a photo of it, but I didn't. So I suppose I can just swap those around. No, wait a sec, I'm just thinking. No, 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 no. This car has a wasted spark ignition. So I don't think it matters actually which way around uh, the spark plugs go in either one of the coils because it fires at the same time because cylinders one and four fire both at the same time all the time. So that's why it's called a wasted spark, I think, because when say cylinder one is on its exhaust stroke, it will still fire. I think. So I don't think it actually matters what way around I connect one and four into the coil. I hope. <laughs> We're gonna find out really soon. Now look, I'm not hopeful this is gonna work. I know so many people have said to me, and the only reason I'm doing this whole thing is because I've had so many comments of people just saying crankshaft position sensor. And so I'm giving it a go for that reason alone because I do trust you lot. But like I said, I've got my reservations. This this uh, this sensor was supposed to have been changed, I think last November, less than a year ago from now. So, and I've just replaced it with, you know, a 20 pound Chinese knockoff version. So anyway, enough rambling. Let's just start, I suppose, and see what happens. I also splashed out on a really high-end state-of-the-art security system. <laughs> All right, well, do that every time the key is on the left hand side okay let's just uh see what happens basically we've uh, got the same old noises as before which isn't a bad thing necessarily uh, okay not good nothing 
Wait, wait, let me just go and check to see I had definitely plugged everything back in again. No, everything is plugged in. So, I mean, the battery's gonna go flat in a minute, you watch. But let's just try it again. Fuel pump's on, everything's on. Go on. Nope. Okay, so the only thing I've changed is the crankshaft position sensor. Oh, I've just made it worse. <laughs> now it won't start at all. Um, so maybe that means that me kind of playing around with the coils, you know, half taking them out and then putting them back in again, maybe they were on their way out. And maybe me just kind of irritating things in there has either actually broken the coils properly or the wiring that I showed you going into the coils, maybe that is now like, you know, even worse than what it looked like when I told you about it in the last video. Oh, I'm just gonna try it again, just. When everything comes on, you can hear it, the fuel pump, things are buzzing. I'm just gonna give it a second, just kind of with the ignition turned on. We've got fuel, have we? No, don't die. It sounds rough. If I take my foot off the throttle now. Oh, okay, it's idling, but really nastily. That is nasty idle. I can see the engine shaking, so I don't know if she's misfiring or what. Maybe those coils, the HT leads are the wrong way around. Look at her shaking away, look. What is that? Is she misfiring? She could be. Sounded healthier. Still hasn't cut out. Literally, as I said that, it cut out. There we go, same amount of time as ever. And now, if I try and start her again, it looks like when she comes up to temperature, this is where now she won't start again. Dies, there we go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly the same story as before. So unfortunately, it wasn't the crankshaft position sensor and we still don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> She's running rougher than she was before. So now I really do mean, I really do mean, I'm not gonna do any more work on her, park her up properly in a couple of weeks time when I've got the Audi out of the way and we're gonna do the wiring loom. Like I said, there's too many, there's too many things that it could be that the wiring is affecting. I don't want to waste my time anymore. I don't want to waste your guys' time anymore. Please, please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps me out a lot. And uh, give me a follow on Instagram as well. My username is right there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming and I'll see you in the next one.